I want to start this out actually with a Trump, a President treat, tweet that I just have read. I'll read it. I'm sure you've seen it. Nobody knows for sure that the Republicans and Democrats will be able to reach a deal on DACA by February 8th, but everyone will be trying with a big additional focus put on military strength and border security. The Dems have just learned that a shutdown is not the answer. That's what the president is saying. So let's go exactly there. How are we going to avoid having this repeat itself in February, what we've just seen in January? Well, David, I think, honestly, we were making significant progress in negotiations on immigration on DACA. I think that Democrats had moved significantly in understanding what the administration's requests were for border security. When they heard frontline officials in Customs and Border Patrol say, here's where there's the greatest drug interdiction, here's where we have the, ba the biggest lapses in our border, they were beginning to accept, okay, the president's proposal here makes sense. And our side was accepting their, their request to expand the population that would receive legal permanent status meaning that the 690,000 people in the so-called DACA program, those who are between age 16 and 36 who have work permits, Democrats have said, you know, there's a lot of people who, for whatever reasons, were afraid to come out of the shadows or unwilling to register, and you need to include them, too. So I think we were actually making significant progress before the Democrats chose to shut down the government. So that was always quite confusing to us. I don't think we're going to be there again on February 8th. I think that hopefully the next few weeks we'll continue to make significant progress there. And we also need to get a budget cap deal in place, David, so that we can get the government funded for the next two years. No, exactly right. And I want to come back to the budget caps, but specifically on the so-called DACA deal. Let me get a sense of what would make the deal, because what I've heard from Chuck Schumer, the majority leader, as well as, for example, from Representative Gutierrez from Chicago, they are now saying, okay, fine, there could be some form of wall. It seems that they are willing to do that, which is something you've insisted on. How big does it have to be? And I don't mean just physically. How much money do you need to get appropriated for that southern border security? Well, David, the request for about the next seven years that the Customs and Border Patrol officials have put forward is about $33 billion. But that includes, beyond the physical barrier, it also includes the technology that Democrats have traditionally been okay with. That is a multi-year request. Here's what our concern is. In the past, Democrats have voted for wall funding that's authorized. But it's a clever game in Washington because you authorize it, but then you never appropriate the dollars. What we're asking is let's not go play this, get that game again. If we're going to vote to support what we think is needed for physical barrier, then let's make sure the money's appropriated with it this time. Mark, uh, there's been a lot of drama around the government shutdown. There will be a similar uh, amount of drama, I suspect, with respect to the debt ceiling. Does this completely suck the air out of any effort to get some kind of infrastructure bill on the uh, docket for this year? I don't think it does. We, I think that infrastructure is a bipartisan priority. It's something the administration will be rolling out in the next couple of weeks. I think you'll see the president make it a central part of his State of the Union speech, and, uh, and then I think we'll be off and running. I think all these other issues are big and important, but they have deadlines on them. So I think the budget cap, debt ceiling, DACA situation is going to be intense, but I think it's going to be something that's, that's over the next probably six weeks. Yeah. And then throughout the spring would be more of an infrastructure battle. But Mark, you know, you say it's it's going to be a bipartisan effort. We are reading an increasing number of articles about the animosity between uh, the parties and even internecine battles. I mean, uh, have we gained any ground on bringing people together or have people gotten so far apart uh, that a bipartisan bill is looking increasingly impossible? I still think we can find bipartisanship here. I think we had bipartisanship last year, if you recall, when we had uh, a continuation of a three-month CR as well as a debt ceiling that, uh, that the president struck a deal with Leader Pelosi and Leader Schumer. I think we can still do that. I think the reality is that people know we need infrastructure package, and we know we need to resolve this immigration issue once and for all. And I think this president's in a position that he can help make that possible. So, Mark, you've given us some sense of how you think a deal could be made on border security slash DACA, both sides giving something, provided the money actually gets appropriated. What about those budget caps that you referred to? Is there a deal there? Because as I understand it, there has been a difference of opinion. The Republicans, by and large, say we have got to increase the military spending. We don't want to increase the domestic as much. The Democrats say we want to do dollar for dollar. Is there a deal there somewhere? I think actually we're very close to the deal. I think that the position that Democrats had is that they said that they didn't want to move anything unless it was all together. So they wanted CHIP, which we've now taken care of, plus the disaster supplemental from the hurricanes, 
plus budget caps plus DACA all together. And their position was, if they're not all together, none will move. Well, I think we've already broken that, right? Because now we've passed CHIP. There's no reason we can't now move forward on a budget caps deal now that we have an agreement to bring up a DACA bill in February. So I'm hopeful we'll do that. In fact, I'm headed back to the Hill this afternoon to continue those conversations in a bipartisan manner with both uh, Republican and Democrat leadership staffs. Mark, how involved has President Trump been in the uh, ongoing negotiations? He's been integrally involved. I think that if you look at what happened in the last several days, keep in mind that last Thursday there was a first vote in the House, and that looked like that would that would have trouble. There are members of the Conservative Freedom Caucus who felt that we've done multiple CRs. It's time to stop this, and the president made an appeal to them to say, "Look, guys, get on board because if we shut down the government, it doesn't really help our leverage." He helped to get through the House when we went to the Senate side. He was very engaged in conversations with Leader McConnell mm -hmm. and as well with uh, John Cornyn, and and helped. To to, to put together, I think, our strategy through the weekend of what our communications would be, which was essentially that if Democrats are going to take hostage 320 million Americans who are paying their taxes law-abiding to solve a problem for illegal residents, we're not going to negotiate during that. As soon as they reopen the government, we'll continue negotiations again. And that's where we find ourselves. So, so, so Mark, uh, let me bring up the deficit, something we don't hear very much yeah. about anymore. Suppose deficit hawks, I can't find any right now running around <laughs> Washington. Uh, getting through all of this, assuming we get it through all, what happens to the deficit? And we already had that $1.5 I understand you think it'll be less than that because of the growth, but some significant amount of deficit because of the tax cuts. We've got other sorts of spending cuts that are going to be waived, it appears. Those caps are going to be lifted. What happens to the deficit? Are we worried about that? David, we're very worried. It's a great question. On the taxes, I do believe that you're already seeing foreign companies, <coughs> American companies, bring back foreign dollars, as we, as we said, by having a one-time repatriation rate that I think is really helpful. And I think we're going to generate significant growth. So I am very excited about where we're going as an economy on that front. But you're right. The deficits and the continual spending habits of Washington, D.C. are something that need to be addressed. And as we look at this budget cap deal, the reality is that Secretary Mattis has said, I have been put at a disadvantage by all the continuing resolutions of the last several years. I need to plan. So if you allow me to plan with a higher defense spending number, Democrats counter and say, then we need a higher non-defense spending number. And that sort of continued negotiation only continues to add to our deficit. So you're right. It is something that we all need to address more seriously. So, Mark, given that backdrop, how big can an infrastructure bill be in dollar terms? I think it's why you see uh, the, the team led by Gary Cohn pushing for public-private partnerships to say if there's a portion that the public can put forward, then that, that gives additional leverage for private sector industry to come in and to leverage that higher up and to put more dollars available to put into the infrastructure projects. That's at the root of why we're pushing for public-private partnerships is exactly those deficit concerns.